What you've been waiting for is now ready for you to watch and learn something new about masking. Today is the second series of video tutorial about masking. And in this video, we're going to create a multi screen uh, where you can have a character or multiple characters interacting in your first screen and they can go and travel from one screen to another without being seen in the middle. But if you haven't watched my previous tutorial, I suggest that you go back. So pause this one um, and then I'll have a link on the top left corner of the screen. Click it, go back and watch this uh, video because it's going to teach you the basics of fundamentals of uh, masking. So you understand how masking works, um, how to properly use it. And then when done, come back to this video and continue to watch it and follow along with me step by step so you can learn how to create something like this. So let me show you the example, what it looks like, first of all, before we dig deeper into creating it. So we got a character saying hi, and then he's going to go over skateboarding, travel from one screen to another. And as you can see that while he gets off of the first screen on the left side right here, this is where he disappears. And then he starts to show up when he enters the second scene, just like that, and then starts taking a selfie. Um, now, before diving deeper into this, uh, let me show you one of my students examples uh, where he was trying to be more creative when I taught him about masking. Um, so I'm going to show you something different just to give, give you some inspiration and help you be more creative. So let's go ahead and watch his example together. Like I said, this is going to help you a lot, giving you more um, inspiration and ideas uh, when creating something similar like this. Uh, so let me go ahead and start creating and show you how to simply apply masking to a multi-screen like the one we've got right now. So I'm going to start by removing this guy over here. And I've already got the backgrounds that we're going to use in this project. I'm going to get these guys to start right from the very beginning. I'll get that background as well. Uh, by the way, these backgrounds are from the studio. So if you go into the studio and then you go into the backgrounds right there uh, where you can find the search bar on the top, just go and search for Dubai and you should be able to find those um, images. So this is going to be the first one and then that would be our second one. So my first step before creating is I'm going to select both backgrounds and I will just extend these guys. Let's do something like 18 seconds. And just so we can say organize, I'm going to start by renaming the first image. So I'm going to right click that, rename it and call this screen one. And I'm going to do the same for the second one and call it screen number two like that. And what I want to do is I want to select both images together just so that it's easy for me to resize both images like this so I can make them smaller so we can achieve the multi screen on our canvas. And then I could just position this guy over here. When done, I could just deselect what I have and then drag the other image onto the right side like this. And we start bringing our character. So let's just go back into our studio and then open up uh, characters. Should be able to find um, the character under the 3D. And then we can type in uh, Teen Boy. I think that's the one we were using. Yep, that's the one. So we're going to go ahead and add and grab uh, the character and add him onto our scene. Uh, our first step would be to resize this guy and make sure that he is going to be a fit into the screen right there. And then before we uh, take any further step, uh, we want to make a duplicate of this character. So I'm going to tell you why in a second, but let's just make that duplicate right now. Uh, once you make your positioning and resizing by the character, uh, that's that will be the great, uh, the best time for you to make a duplicate of, of him um, just as, as his. So I'm going to hit Control D to make a duplicate for my character. And then I'm going to drag my duplicate um, onto the right side of the timeline just for now because I don't I don't need to work with that. And let's just worry about um, this guy right here. So our first action was wave. So I'm going to keep that as is. And then I'm going to go and add another action. So I can go under settings, click on add new. Then I can just open up my 
um, action list and then add something new. The other um, action would be skateboarding like this. So we now have the second action. We could just extend this guy a little bit more like this and then check out if he's actually going in the right direction. Yes, he is. He's going to be uh, skateboarding from where he is onto the other screen. So let's just extend this action also a little bit more, something like, you know, until eight seconds or so. And then we want to make, to use a keyframe so that as soon as he gets on the skateboard, um, this is where we are going to add custom animation. So I'm gonna select my character, click on add animation. I will do position and then go onto the easing tab and under in and out, I'm gonna choose linear so that it's smooth from, you know, one uh, direction to another. And then I'm going to, uh, move my playhead forward in time to until the end of the uh, character layer and then simply just drag the second uh, keyframe all the way to where my playhead is at now i want to make sure that this keyframe is um, selected and turned in blue so that we know it's going to you know it's going to work and then our next step would be to hold the shift key and then we with our mouse we could drag the character all the way to the right side here. It's important that we place or position our character uh, right in the middle between both uh, backgrounds, just like that. And again, I'm gonna explain everything in detail, let you know why we're doing that. So we got that covered now. It's a, it's time for us to start working with a second, uh, with a duplicated um, character, right? So that one is gonna start exactly where this one, um, uh, you know, ended up, right? So I'm gonna change the action from wave. Uh, this is our duplicate. So we're gonna change the uh, action from wave to uh, skateboarding like that. And then we can just extend that guy a little bit more like this. And we want to make sure that we drag this character over onto the other guy right there. I mean, it doesn't have to be lined up. It really doesn't matter. Um, but what matters is that the character needs to be off of both screens, like it should be in the middle um, and not anywhere close to those backgrounds, just like what you're looking at right now. And then with my keyframes, I'm gonna get this guy to move over, just do skateboarding from where he is over to the second background. So we're gonna do that now. And then I will just add a click, select my character, click on add animation, go back to your properties. We could just do position easing is linear. Uh, and just a tip for you, it doesn't really matter what order it is. If you were to choose the easing first or the properties, uh, both are still going to work and will still add, automatically add your keyframes onto the um, character or whatever layer uh, track you're working with in the timeline. Now that we got that covered, we want to move our playhead forward in time until the end right there. We drag our second keyframe all the way to where our playhead is at. Make sure this is selected and turned to blue. And with our keyboard, we hold shift. When the mouse, we drag the character um, all the way to the right side, something like that onto the other screen like this. And then from here, we can add another action for this guy. So we can click on add new under settings to add another action. And let's just do um, taking a selfie, right? Um, so taking selfie right there. Okay, cool. All right. So we got that covered. Now he's going to get off the skateboard and then start taking a selfie. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, uh, next step would be to uh, select your uh, backgrounds and make sure that these guys are lined up with the um, second or the duplicate character that you've got right here. And then now we want to group things up, right? So I'm going to start with the with, uh, screen number one, along with our first character that's on the left side. So I'm going to hold shift and then select my other character right there right click and then group these guys like that and then i'm going to rename this also and call this one screen one and then i'll do the same for the other guys so we're going to select the second background along with the character right click and then group you can also hit Control or command g to group things up uh, and then right click the group and call this one a screen number two just like that all right so we got that covered now we want to go back to the very beginning and then as you can see right now, uh, we've got our character, the team boy is saying hi, and then he's gonna get over the skateboard. And as you can see, he's currently, you know, skate skateboarding from one screen to another. But the problem we see right now is that he is um, visible between both keyframes, right? Uh, which is why we're going to use masking right now so that we 
um, trick this part and then you know make sure that our character is going to be hidden so as soon as he gets off of the first screen won't be visible as soon as he enters the first screen won't be visible as well un until he gets into the second screen how we do this this is very simple first of all we're going to grab a rectangle so we're going to i'm going to hold shift R so I can grab a rectangle and then I'm going to resize my rectangle make sure that this is going to be the same size of my scene just like that now sometimes you may want to reduce opacity just like I taught you in the first one just so you can make sure that the size of the um, mask or the rectangles uh, should be exactly the same as your scene pretty much lined up perfectly fine without any gaps right now once we're done don't forget to go back to settings and then turn on or increase the opacity back again to 100 percent now for this because i don't like to have you know a 90 degree angle on the corners i'm going to make this rounded so i'm going to zoom in right here and then i can grab one of the dots um, around the rectangle over here with my crosshair I can just grab it a little bit like that so I can make my scene with rounded corners instead now when that done what I need to do is to make a duplicate of this rectangle so I'm going to hit Control D so I can have a duplicate and with that duplicate all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and then drag the other rectangle onto the other guy right there now it's time for us to apply some masking for both screens so i'm going to select screen number one with the first um, rectangle that's on the left side right there and then i say simply want to right click and then click mask one with rounded rectangle and there you go now you can see that the scene has turned into uh, rounded corners instead of the 90 degree angle that we had previously um, and then we're going to select screen number two along with uh, rectangle, the other rectangle that's on top of it. Right click those and then mask these guys together and voila. Now we have everything set. Um, if we go ahead and play this, this is what it's going to look like. Again, we have our guys, you know, waving, saying hi, he's going to get on the skateboarding. And then he's going to travel over from the screen. As you can see, right, this is where the magic happens. Just this is all because of the masking. So pretty much masking is... Uh, where everything where everything is visible that's inside the shape it's the reason why we don't see the character uh, you know when he gets off he's not visible and then when he gets onto the second screen uh, he's also not visible until he gets onto the second one right so this is where the magic happens when using uh, masking now I hope you've learned something new and that was really easy to create I'm pretty sure that you will have a lot of creative ways in creating multi screens in your project and I actually challenge you to create something similar to this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but you could try to be more creative, um, maybe see what my student has created um, again. And if you like that one, you can go ahead and create something like it or just create something in your, uh, your you know, um, in your own taste. Uh, just be more creative. But I challenge you to create something like this and then make sure that you go back to my Facebook post uh, and then post your creation so that others can see what you've created so far um, and get inspiration and, and also get constructive feedback from everyone else. Now, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell to be notified when I release a new video. And stay tuned for my third uh, video that's going to talk about um, track mat in details. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.